back here. All right, Stephen McIntyre is our next speaker. Uh, Stephen is a primary author of Climate Audit, which is a good resource for legislators like me. I love that. Uh, it's a blog devoted to analysis and discussion of climate data. He is most prominent as a critic of the temperature record of the past 1,000 years, particularly the work of Michael E. Mann and the data quality of NASA's Goddard Institute for Space Studies. So give me, let's uh, welcome Stephen. Thanks very much. Um, question today is, uh, do we know that the 1990s were the warmest decade of the millennium, as we've heard so often? In my opinion, we don't know that. However, the opposite's true. We also don't know that the medieval warm period was warmer than the present. The reason is that the proxies in current use are inconsistent, and at present this inconsistency is a roadblock to answering the question. Minor changes of one proxy version to another can yield different answers. The problems with the bristlecone tree rings have may be familiar to some of you, but there are equally intractable problems in Siberia. While I find these issues interesting, both uh, statistically and analytically, I readily concede, as many people have argued, that the whole matter may not, that it may not matter for the big picture, the survival of the species sort of thing, but fair enough. But then policymakers and the public surely have the right to be annoyed at IPCC and others for so prominently displaying what they now say to be an irrelevancy in their public expositions of AGW. And contrary to later claims at Real Climate and similar sites, there's no doubt that the Mann hockey stick was not an incidental appendage to the third assessment report that was isolated by skeptics as a weak stray from the flock. It was prominently featured in the report and was almost, almost could be said to be the logo of the third assessment report. Here is John Houghton at the press conference for the 2001 uh, assessment report with the hockey stick in the background. The hockey stick gave rise to the associated sound bites that the 1990s were the warmest decade and 1998 the warmest year. Uh, these were prominently used by the uh, Canadian government um, in the promotion of the Kyoto Protocol. Indeed, these sound bites were how I first even heard of uh, global warming as an issue. The hockey stick was also prominently featured in Inconvenient Truth, where Al Gore spliced the man hockey stick with the CRU instrumental temperature record and mistakenly called the splice series Dr. Thompson's ice core thermometer. Uh, and then cited, in effect, then cited this as independent proof of the man hockey stick. Uh, Gore took a passing swipe at the so-called fierce attack of skeptics against the stick, thus, I guess, uh, giving Ross and I a backhanded citation. <laughs> the original man hockey stick is re retained in the 2007 uh, fourth assessment report, but now is one strand in what I've called a spaghetti graph, a graph in which the reconstructions appear to agree on very little, except that the late 20th century is slightly warmer than the medieval period. Referring to this graph, uh, man observed some time ago that critics are not facing merely a hockey stick, but an entire hockey team, a term that I cheerfully adopted at Climate Audit to describe Michael Mann, Gavin Schmidt, and their associates. Uh, <laughs> last year, Mann re-entered the fray with a new reconstruction uh, at using an even more obscure statistical methodology than the original paper. Paleoclimate reconstructions are, in uh, statistical parlance, a form of multivariate calibration. This is a technique that has been studied by real statisticians. Um, and uh, this, we made, Ross and I made this point in a recent uh, comment on the Mann 2008 paper. Although there are known statistical methods for uh, multivariate calibration. Mann and associates have developed their own ad hoc methodologies, the properties of which are poorly understood, as we discovered on an earlier occasion with Mann's modifications to principal components methods uh, in the original hockey stick paper uh, that had some unforeseen defects. 
we also um, applied, in a survey of statistical uh, problems in ecology in the early 1990s, Jan Deleu, a prominent applied statistician, made the obvious uh, condition for a valid model that it be stable to small and uninteresting perturbations, specifically mentioning stability to data selection and to minor variations in technique. In fact, this sort of thing is often done in paleoclimate where you see the word robustness used all the time. Unfortunately, robustness claims in the literature are often, shall we say, artful and sometimes even untrue, um, so that each such claim needs to be carefully dissected. This was uh, a characteristic of our articles and many climate audit posts. One section of our 2005 E&E article was entitled, The Effect of Slight Variations of, on 15th Century Temperature Results where we reported that small changes in the number of retained principal components and in the presence and absence of bristle cones had a noticeable impact on results, such that early 15th century values of a man-style method exceeded late 20th century uh, results. Since we did not believe that a slight tweak of Mannian proxies and methods would magically yield a valid reconstruction, we did not present this as our own alternative version of temperature history, but merely as a demonstration that slight variations in method and data yielded uh, inconsistent results. The results are unstable because in the network of proxies, only two series have a hockey stick shape. Um, the bristlecone pines and an equally problematic series from Gaspé. If these series receive less weight, there is nothing in the rest of the data to indicate a hockey stick shape. Now, surprisingly, uh, in terms of what you might read, there's not actually any dispute between the parties on the effect of a sufficiently well-specified calculation. I show here on the top left, a figure from uh, a 2003 reply but from Mann, uh, at Mann et al. Uh, to our first paper. On the top right, a, a figure from Berger and Kubash. Uh, on the bottom, a re the bottom left, uh, a plot, a replot of data from our 2005 article. And on the bottom, middle and right, uh, a replot of uh, data from Wall and Man's algorithm. As you see, all four groups show that slight variations in technique yield a high 15th century with Man's data and proxies, something that you, in fact, the Wall and Amman uh, calculations and NARS agree to seven nines accuracy. So uh, the, the people, the, the calculations themselves are not in dispute. The lack, this lack of robustness was recognized by the 2006 National Academy panel, which said that the man reconstruction is strongly dependent on data from the Great, Be Great Basin region in western United States, and that it wasn't robust to the removal of certain records. Now, th th here they're using a code word. What they really meant to say was bristle cones, but they weren't going to say it. But on the other hand, they uh, certainly confirmed the finding. Now here's what IPCC said. They said that Wall and Amman had showed that, showed that the impact uh, was very small at complete odds to the finding of the National Academy. The reason why they said this was that Wall and Amman had argued that if they kept including more principal components, they could get the bristle cones in anyway, and if they, by getting the bristle cones in, there wasn't, it didn't matter. Their argument as to why the bristle cones should be included is something that, you know, in the plain light of day is almost uh, unbearable to read. They say that bristle cones add necessary verification skill. In, in the, the, what this means is that without the bristle cones, the model fails, and so the failure of the model is proof that the bristle cones contain important information at the level of eigenvector patterns in global 
surface temperatures, so that even though the bristle cones have no relationship to local temperature, they have eigenvector information. Now, Ed Wegman led a panel in 2006. Wegman's the chairman of the National Academy Committee on Theoretical and Applied Statistics. And he observed that this uh, method of Wall and Amon had, quote, no statistical integrity. I asked uh, the IPCC to cite the Wegman report um, in their assessment of this. They refused. The main support, the main other line of support for the hockey stick is the one that you hear that a dozen independent studies which didn't use the MAN methodology and used independent data and methods got the same answer. MAN 2003 Senate testimony used the word dozen independent research groups. Wigley said it. MAN said the same thing in 2005. And this uh, phrase still exists in Wikipedia. In the 2007 IPCC report, they concede that these reconstructions are, quote, not entirely independent. Well, in fact, the situation is a whole lot worse than that. Um, this uh, plot adapted from the Wegman report, which, was, which drew on uh, climate audit information, shows that bristle cones are used in nine out of 12 uh, spaghetti graph studies and polar urals and tornatrask are used in every one of them. So if problems should arise in any of these three uh, stereotype series, then this will have a knock-on effect, not just simply for the three uh, individual proxies, but for the 12, all 12 spaghetti graph uh, that use it. And that proves to be the case. The bristle cones come from California. Um, it, for some time, since the 1970s, it's been known that medieval tree lines were uh, a num number of tens of meters higher than at present. A recent study by uh, ecologists estimated from uh, ecological niche information that the medieval period was 3.2 degrees warmer than at present using the information from these uh, uh, trees above present tree line. Against that, the man bristlecone chronologies, in effect, imp imply ice, uh, little ice age cold during the same period. The IPCC, uh, so now the bristlecone chronologies were collected by Donald Graybill in the 1980s and in 2006 were over 20 years old. Whether they were right or wrong, they represented the results of only one researcher. Mere prudence suggests that Graybill's sites should be resampled, and given the relative warmth of the past two decades, this would be an ideal out-of-sample test to see if they are valid as world thermometers in warm conditions. There's an extra reason. Ironically, Graybill was trying to show that, the, that carbon dioxide fertilization caused the bristlecone pine growth, and arch skeptic Sherwood did so was a, a co-author of the original study publishing these bristlecone pine chronologies and was in 2003 quite shocked to learn that these were the active ingredient in the man hockey stick. Um, despite spending billions of dollars on climate, uh, uh, on climate research and the obvious need for modern data, the, the IPCC said that there was no uh, data at these sites. Michael Mann excused this on the idea that uh, these sites required heavy equipment and expensive campaigns to update. Now, some of you may know I have some experience in mineral exploration, and it struck me that this was, these were not terribly complicated expeditions uh, to mount. And here is a picture of the heavy equipment required to uh, core a tree ring. At Climate Audit, we we formulated what I called the Starbucks hypothesis, that a UCAR scientist could have a latte at Starbucks in the morning, sample the bristle cones, and be home for dinner, a theme that we'll return to. <coughs> However, the IPCC statement that these sites had not been updated was not entirely true. Um, uh, in 2002, a student at the University of Arizona, Lena Abobne, 
had updated the, uh, bristle, the most important man site, the bristle cones, and got uh, completely contrary results. Instead of a hockey stick, she, had, she obtained a series shown on the right with little change over the uh, period of time. Despite this, the, uh, the, the 20 year old Graybill results were used in, the, uh, in all the IPCC studies and in Mann's 2008 study, even though uh, Abobne's supervisor Hughes was a co author, they continued to use the obsolete Graybill data rather than the up to date Abobne data, making no effort to reconcile the discrepancy or to justify the decision. In 2007, another series in El Magre, uh, Colorado was updated um, and again, instead of showing um, record temperatures, the, uh, the current temperatures are uh, at long-term averages and showing no impact of recent growth. This is currently the highest uh, thousand-year chronology and most up-to-date thousand-year chronology in the world. Here are the samplers for this expedition. You may recognize one of them. Uh, and uh, we sort of specifically proved the Spar Starbucks hypothesis. Here we are at 7 in the morning in front of the Starbucks. And there we are a couple of hours later up sampling bristle cones. We cited, uh, we, by, by sheer luck, we identified one of uh, Graybill's actual trees, a number of Graybill's actual trees. And here's Pete Holtzman, a climate audit reader, uh, sampling an identical tree that Graybill sampled some years earlier. We have our own theory as to sort of how the hockey stick got started. Um, and it pertains, uh, we don't think carbon dioxide fertilization is really what's going on. We think that it might very well just be a mechanical reaction to strip bark uh, formation. I won't spend time to show it, but this, what we found in taking uh, cores that were nine inches apart, uh, if you look at the third diagram there, that you have huge six sigma excursions in one core and uh, no excursion in one nine inches away. So the, um, the error models in these strip bark uh, trees uh, is impossible to quantify. What we think may happen is that the breaking of branches causes the strip bark to form, that, uh, p that snow causes the breaking of branches, that this can cause a hundred year excursion, and so that this may in fact result from cold weather in the 1840s. We see similar problems in the polar Urals. Um, here's one version um, wh wh which affects all the other series that the bristle cones don't affect. This is a, a version that Briffa used in 1995 to show that the 11th century was the coldest in the millennium. Here again, you have uh, medieval trees above the modern tree line. Updated uh, results in the late 90s had an elevated medieval period. Uh, these results were never published. Instead, Briffa substituted another site uh, 90 miles away, which had a hockey stick shape, and this was incorporated into Briffa 2000 and all subsequent studies. Tornatrask, similar thing. Uh, Briffa's results are used in every study. In 2006, Grud updated the results and got a different result. Ice scores don't help much. Um, uh, the second one from the top, I'm, I'm going to go through fast now. Uh, if you look at the second from the top, uh, the ice cores from Mount Logan and the Yukon have gone down. These are attributed to regional variation. But when, when the oxygen in 18 goes up, it of course is evidence of global warming. Different spaghetti choices yield different results. So uh, just making minor variations to the NAS diagram, I get different results. Now against all of this, you have stories of glacier retreat. Uh, in 1999, uh, stumps from uh, the uh, around 2800 were exposed that were presumably not exposed in the medieval warm period. Uh, Lonnie Thompson's Qualkaya Glacier exposed plants that were dated to 4500 BC that were not presumably not exposed in the medieval warm period. Uh, Jorin in the, the Alps has uh, recovered many uh, tree stumps and postulates green Alps in the 
uh, Roman time. The key thing in all of these is that the evidence that the modern period might be warmer than the medieval period is evidence that it was even warmer than the medieval period uh, some time earlier. So it's rather a two-edged sword in terms of unprecedentedness. Does it matter? Well, Gavin Schmidt says that it's one of the ironies that this is the least important figure uh, in the IPCC. And I think that uh, if that's the case, as I, as I pointed out, we have a right to complain that they emphasize it. Now, I think in fairness, there is a way that they uh, could have presented the argument. Um, the left is a uh, diagram from the synthesis report splicing the man hockey stick with the IPCC projections. In their shoes, they might also have just simply done what I've done on the right, spliced the much despised lamb reconstruction showing a medieval warm period uh, with, in this case, the uh, fourth assessment report to illustrate the idea that the projections are of a different scale than the argument over the medieval warm period. And I think that the, I think that, that the IPCC would have been well within their rights to make that kind of, of an argument. Uh, but that then throws the issues back to the ones that matter is are their projections right? And uh, so if that's the issue as a reviewer, uh, I suggest that, well, if, these, if the hockey stick and these medieval reconstructions don't matter, then why don't you just delete that entire section from the fourth assessment report and save the space you're looking for? But you know you can't you can't both say it doesn't matter and then include it in the policy reports. However, they also argue that it does matter, and that uh, the arguments made well, if the hockey stick is wrong, the situation is much worse than we think. Um, and then my reaction to that is quite simple: if if the hockey stick is wrong, then we should find out and govern ourselves accordingly. And I should not be the only person that's worried about whether, whether this is right or wrong. And nobody should thank authors who have obstructed the identification of these problems uh, through withholding of data and methodology. Uh, so vi visit, visit climateaudit.org uh, uh, for more discussions. Uh, feel free to contribute to it too, as well.